Hey guys, today I want to show you how to use um, stems for your live set in Ableton. So say you have made a song in Logic or Cubase or Ableton, for example, um, and you want to perform with that song live. It can be very handy to have separate tracks there so that you have your kick drum, your um, vocals maybe, your other drums, your effects, your synths, whatever. And um, what I usually do is I bounce those down in different stems. So I have, for example, eight stems for each song. So that live, I have a little bit more control to play things uh, separately and to change settings on the kick drum, for example. Um, and to do that, of course, you want to get them uh, nice and uh, tightly inside Ableton um, on the right tempo, etc. So this is how I do that. Um, when I've made my own song, I, of course, know the tempo. And the first thing I do when I bounce stems, when I export stems, is that I write the key and the tempo in the uh, file title so that I always know which files I'm working with also when I'm in the session view in Ableton. Um, so that's the first thing I do and you can see that on the left here um, we have the bass, drums, effects, melodic, they're all at 130 BPM and they're in the key of F uh, Phrygian which is a minor mode. So once you've done that you can um, select the ones you want so let's say I want these I can Click this one, hold shift and click the last one. Sorry, it's hold command. So now I've got all my stems uh, selected, just four in this case. And now I can drag them into Ableton, but I don't release the uh, mouse yet. Because now as you can see, it's uh, putting them all on one track and I don't want that. I want them below each other, not after each other. And um, when I press command, they are below each other, so not after each other. So before you release the uh, mouse button, press command on your Mac keyboard and then release them. So now they're all uh, below each other. And this is my whole song. And I don't want to, I don't want to um, set the tempo automatically for these. I just want to um, unwarp them. So warp should be off because otherwise it's going to guess the tempo so all the um, warp buttons should be off for all files and then i'll go to my tempo in the upper left here and i'll set it 100 bpm and now it should fit exactly on my transients so here are my first eight bars and you can see that exactly there um, some new stuff is happening so this way you make sure that you don't have any problems or that you don't cut off somewhere halfway between the bar. So that's the first step. And then I can take this marker, uh, which is my loop marker, and I'll set it to the division that I want. So I might want different uh, snapshots of four bars or of eight bars. I usually go for eight. And I'll just select that and then you can right click and then you can say split. Or command E and we just go over and do this with the whole track split them all and the advantage of using this loop marker and then dragging it is that you don't have to split the individual tracks it cuts them all like this and of course sometimes when I have a section that is a little bit different for example here I have a build that is just two bars I can just change the size and do it like that. And at the top right here, you can see how many bars the loop marker is set. So now it's set at eight. And I'll keep it at eight for this section. And then here we have a little bit extra of a bar. Well, actually, I think at the beginning here, we have a little bit extra. This is like just a short bar in between. So I'm just gonna cut that out separately. I'll set it to eight bars again. Eight. And the last one. And then there are some pads and I'm just gonna 
grab those all in them bars and now I can delete the ending it's just a short fade so now once I've done this um, it's already looking a lot better but the first thing I need to do now is consolidate all these tracks um, and when you consolidate them it deletes the rest of the audio file so as you can see now it has a split the track and it has set the markers but the rest of the track is still in there I can still change this marker and um, listen to more of the track and that's fine but when I'm playing live I want to be sure that I have just this section in the audio file not the rest so that nothing can go wrong and you can't accidentally change these these loop markers so I'm gonna select them all again and then press command J and now it's consolidating them so I can do this for all the files just the same way and I will not do that for the whole track right now but you get the idea so then the last step is getting them into the session view and to do that we can just select them all command A and then click on them on the title and press tab and then you automatically see them here in your session window and I'll paste them there and now when I play the first row it should play the first section of the song and then the second section and to make this even easier I can um, select them all again and I'll go over to uh, right here with this L button, launch button and I'll set the follow action to 8 because we get 8 bars and then I'll set it to next clip and then um, this ratio is the chance of how um, is, the, is the chance of what it's gonna do so I wanted a, a ratio of 1 to 0 that means it's always gonna go to the next clip after 8 bars um, of course for some of these uh, stems we had a different we had a different size for some we had uh, one bar but you just have to uh, track those down I think it was this one maybe and then uh, change the follow action manually but um, most of them are eight bars so just selecting them all still works pretty good and then for the last uh, section you don't want them to go to the next clip because then they will automatically go to the beginning though there so there you just say no action and then it uh, just keeps looping on the last clip make this a little bit shorter to make the oh sorry I forgot to set them on loop I still have to set them all on loop so select them all again and then um, I need to say warp and loop Now everything should be uh, perfectly in sync and you can see here that I didn't um, didn't change the didn't consolidate these files which is now um, becoming a problem because it looks a bit confusing but it still works so this is my section of um, four bars so I can change those uh, manually by selecting them and setting the follow action to 4 instead of 8. Um, so that is how I work with uh, my files in live and how I prepare them for a live set. And then after this of course there's a lot of different stuff you can do. You can change the routing to make it more flexible. You can have the drums always go through one uh, bus etc. But uh, you were able to figure it out. Thanks and uh, see you next video.